Mr. Toastmaster, gentlemen, big brother is watching you. Classic novel by George Orwell, 1984, the character of Big Brother. Our Big Brother in that novel was the, the leader of a nation called Oceania. And in Oceania, the idea was that everybody was being monitored. Who were being monitored and they wanted you to know it. And everybody lived by the slogan, Big Brother is watching you. But surely, even 36 years later, this is still quite far away, right? Well, we'll see. We'll see. In South Africa, you might uh, think about people observing you or watching you as, as maybe something like a drone or some aerial photography. Now, interestingly, a number of years ago, Barbara Streisand decided to sue an, an aerial surveyor. So someone that takes photos from an airplane for invasion of her privacy. So luckily she lost that case because what the court said was that she didn't have a reasonable expectation of privacy. Because reasonably speaking, somebody will flying from that height over her house is not really going to see much. So that's possibly where we are at, but it's getting there fast. This is an example of something called recognition from a company Amazon. And what recognition allows you to do is take a series of photographs. And in the first segment you'll see up there, it allows you to identify objects in the photograph. So what you can do is say, there is Adrian, it understands my face. You can do a facial comparison for what it has. It can then say, I'm on a bicycle. It can perhaps pick up the brand of my shoe. It can pick up all sorts of things with a certain degree of accuracy and build a profile about me. So you would think, well, you know, this is very unlikely. I mean, it's only the big companies that could do this. But the service costs a whopping 40 American cents per thousand images to process this kind of imagery. All right, so this is the kind of technology we have available and that, that you and me can use. Now, this scenario shows you what can go wrong when you do this kind of thing. And this is an example of Steve and Tally. And what happened is there was a bank robbery. And they used this image recognition matching to place him as the bank robber. So the challenge with this whole scenario is that out of a thousand images, you might have an accuracy or a, an error of 0.8%. But that means that out of a thousand robberies like this where somebody is identified, eight times you can get it wrong. So luckily, Stephen Talley had a very good alibi. Otherwise, he could have ended up in jail. Now what you see over here is something you might not immediately recognize. But I don't know if anybody have you have ever seen somebody with a sticker over their camera on their laptop. And some people say, well, that's crazy. But in reality, there was a study done in 2013 where they actually showed that it was possible. A group of scientists showed that they could take control of a MacBook, activate the camera, and see what was going on on the other side without the green light going on. And there are court records from the, the federal U.S. court system where the FBI show again and again that they are able to hack into these cameras and see what you are doing. And so there's, it's even gone to the, state, to the stage where there's products to cover up your camera system. So that's very rare. The scenario Gmail, 1.4 billion users of Gmail. And according to the, the usage, as long as uh, application developers tell you when you use their application that they are going to potentially read your email. They could even have permission to delete it. If you go next, 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 you can give them permission to literally read every word of your emails. Okay, so we're looking at specific examples, but it can also go wrong when you take a lot of data and you aggregate it. So, I don't know if anybody has heard of a company called Strava, but they provide this exciting application where you can run against your friends and if they run in a similar area, you can do the comparison. So, what they decided to do was show off. And they said, we're going to show the millions and millions of records we have and we're going to put that on a map and show you where all our users are. So, the problem is, in Afghanistan, there's not a lot of people that use the Strava app to go and jog in Afghanistan. 
I don't know if it's the heat or what. And what happened there was quite a startling thing. Now we get on this map, darkness, and then some light. So if you see in the middle there, a bit of light. And that is the Helmand uh, base, military base in Afghanistan. So just from these Strava maps, they were able to see where the American military bases were to a frightening level of detail from just the jogging patterns of the soldiers that were running around. Another example, Geophilia. The so Geophilia was big criticism a few years ago. What they do is they take feeds from Facebook and Twitter and uh, five other types of social media and they put it together and they give messaging to the uh, police services. What the police services were able to do is they said, well, we stopped some people from committing suicide, we stopped armed uh, gatherings, we stopped uh, criminal syndicates from operating. And unfortunately, they were shot down. Okay, so again, I'm going to ask the question, how close are we to this Big Brother scenario? Now, these are all fairly interesting things, but they're quite vague. Now this is an example in Shanghai of a store. And what the store does is you take your application, you tell it, I want the store to come to me. And this is live, by the way, it's happening right now. The store comes to you, you use your phone, you go inside and you buy your groceries. But the, the slightly more creepy thing is that it actually builds enough of a profile of you to suggest other users as potential marriage partners. And that's what the, the future use is seen as. That this thing is going to gather so much information about you. Now, if you look at Shenzhen, another Chinese city, what you see over here is people walking across a crossing, and they might be considered to be jaywalkers. So, you'll remember that famous picture of the Beatles, and what would happen to the Beatles if they had been crossing that road while it was red, is that they would have received a message on WeChat to say, you have been fined. If you recognized your face, you have been fined, and not only that, but they put that information on a board, on a big notice board on the side of the road. There's some of your ID details, your family name, etc. That's called shame. So, where are we? 2020. 2020 is next year. Now, what is happening next year is that China is implementing a social credit system, which has already been implemented in a number of states over the last few years. And what this is going to do, in this example, this is an internet cafe, so what they've already started to do, through facial recognition and other tracking mechanisms, is in scenarios of transportation, where people have been loitering at a station where they haven't paid a ticket, where they loiter in front of a, a flight schedule board, they have banned 9 million people to date from flying, from, from booking a local flight ticket, and they've banned 3 million people from booking an upper class ticket on a train already banned them. Another crazy scenario is bandwidth throttling. So what they're literally doing is they are now saying to users that are playing too many video games, buying inappropriate things on the internet, or even using social media, in those scenarios they are literally throttling the bandwidth of those people, but you can't get a fast internet connection. This is the level of social engineering that is going on right now. And then the scenario of education. So Mr. Balkan, 17 people in the last year were refused access to an educational institution because they refused to take up conscription to the army. So they put them on a database and when they tried to access the schools, they said, no, thank you very much. But even worse, there was one student who, when applying to a school, <coughs> was rejected because of their father's social credit score. Then jobs, access to jobs. So believe it or not, in China, a, a, a high-paying government job is seen as a, a very good job to have. And what they do there, unlike many African countries, is that if you're found guilty of fraud or embezzlement, you will literally be blocked from any of those jobs. They will block you. And finally, this nailing and shaming. So as I showed in the previous example, what is happening now is that all these transgressions are being built up and these are being put onto databases and systems. So these systems have your ID number, your name, and the company that you work for. 
And these databases are in place and they're ready to go for 2020. So that we will literally have the George Orwell 1984 scenario in China next year. But is it all bad? Big Brother's watching. A comment from a 32-year-old gentleman was to say, it was about two months after the implementation in his state, and his comment was, in the beginning it was very difficult and a bit strange, but he's found that things have been much better lately. He said people don't go over the crossroads, people are behaving better on the roads, and behaving better generally. So at the end of the day, whether you think it could be a good thing or not, I think the answer is not. Big Brother watching you is right here, right now. Mr. Toastmaster.